Okay, um... Alright. Hello everybody! Um, welcome to a special Hashtag Aka Talks episode. Uh, been a while since I did a regular Hashtag Aka Talks here, so... Again, thank you so much for your immense support for... For my Vita Preparation Tutorial, so thank you so much. Um... To be honest, I, I don't know where to start on this particular topic because as we just witnessed last week on Wednesday, uh, I directed um, uh, and helped Emmy uh, relive the moment of Sinalis Global for the final time until it's... Um, Final breath at 1 p.m. here in the Philippines. So, but we also had some caveats as well because before T minus 10 minutes, we just got an outage. Um, it was due to one of the power lines caught, uh, to one of the having the power lines, uh, power lines that got caught in some leaf or something from a tree, kind of like a like a banana tree, and so that's why everything went power off for the time being. So we were scrambling a lot here, and uh, Emmy just kept apologizing and apologizing to everyone in that server, uh, the Sinalis Global server. But we actually took the step in actually. No, my apologies, I still have a cough today. But uh, I'm still getting better. Don't worry about it. Um, thing is, um, we were scrambling and he kept apologizing when the uh, stream resumes, but it's kind of like lagging because we're on mobile data back then. Um, we're using my phone as the mobile data, although I will be switching phones this Sunday to AO5S, which is kind of nice. I've already canvassed it. I've already taken a look at it. And the funny thing is, um, the salespeople actually let me use one of their devices, one of their demo devices that I could, so that I could do art. So huge shout outs to the crew over at SMC Divatan for hooking me up with that. And letting me do my thing because uh, Paramax Center is kind of shit when it comes to customer service. Of course, uh, they're gonna entertain you once you have the money to buy one of them Apple products, which is real pain in the ass. <laughs> Excuse me. Taste the water. But, as I've said, um, it has already been shut down. The Sinai Global has already been shut down. So it's over. It's over for them. It's over for us. Um, the final screen that we took a look at before we visit the screen was there was a maintenance between that shutdown day and the following month, which is 15 December at that same time frame. So we can't be sure what to deal with um, next. But uh, assuming that it just J7 Pro will be I mean it will be in Emmy's hands soon. Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean he can format it anyway if he wanted. But we talked about it um, a few days later, and he said we're gonna wait for 15 December to arrive, and then we set up for this kind of thing, whether or not it would be a clear goal for us to format J7 Pro after what's like three to four years. Yeah, three to five, four, three to five years, I guess, because um, this was last formatted in 2019. Huh. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, what a thought. <laughs> 
Anyhow, let's just take a moment to have a post-mortem discussion here. Because, again, there are some things that I still clearly can't, um, I can't describe how painful it was to actually let go of something that has been with you ever since its inception. I mean, something like Sinai's Global made a great impact to his life. Of course, he already knew that from the bottom of his heart, and he continues to do so ever since. So, I mean, when you look at from his uh, from his blog, when he actually made a statement regarding Sino Alice Global, he actually made quite a um, remembrance to thinking that it's it's still not uh, it's still not over for for his guild, the uh, Lonely Bride, because. I mean, the Lonely Bride is going anywhere. That is according to him. I mean, you've already seen some experiences. I actually had first-hand experience with Asphalt 9, a racing game that he was devoted to. I mean, he missed playing Asphalt 9 Legends. So, kind of want to take a crack at it, but... I did suddenly realize that he has a... Club name, or kind of like an equivalent of a guild name in, but in Asphalt Nine, it's kind of like a, a but the interpreted as club name. He said it as the Lonely Bride, so I asked him, why the Lonely Bride? Well, he he said, if there's a time when Sino Alice can't be around, that spirit will still remain as the Lonely Bride. So. The Lonely Bride is some sort of going itself to new dimensions in life and of course be able to get in touch with everyone else on the field so that whenever he's playing something, you will always, whether he was playing something or representing a group, they will all know the Lonely Bride was from Sino Alice initially in Global Edition. So I'm not sure if he will be at Japanese edition because that's the one thing we're going to talk about next. Um, but uh, right now, all I can say is, is that on behalf of him, I was actually kind of like surprised that he has this kind of dedication, even though he's losing to, to some of the guilds there. And when he battled in a coliseum, he knows that he has to deal with it because think of it like as his last, so he wanted to deliver it as if this is like his last, so... <clears throat> I mean, what can we expect from all this? I mean... Pokelab have already made uh, quite the decision, like a very disheartening decision to... A heartbreak, heartbreaking decision to cut it off, cut it off, like... Cut the library off from the rest of the universe. And that means having to end everything. But uh, I mean, it's still, still, there's still some glimmer of hope here. I mean, we actually discussed um, behind closed doors what would happen next. I mean, he has the association of Snow White what he can do about it or what can he do about it what can he do next about it to his credit actually i mean he actually told me that he's willing to place any bets that he can have just to revive that legacy that's one thing that we have in common when it comes to, when it comes to dead or alive stuff but let's look at it from his perspective when he talks about Sinatis. he's talking about how to revive that one legacy that has been with him all the time. And that was Snow White. So, how can he had this kind of opportunity to talk about everything and just like tell a story of how one that was supposed to be eliminated is already back from the shadows. It comes to haunt and comes back to haunt him even more with kind of like desires or kind of like a master or everything in a set in common. 
Somebody's fuck. I don't know if my mic had caught that, but that was one of my roommates calling. Fucking Asians. I hate being Asian, like, really. But, you know, it's already in my room, so fuck. But anyway, back to what I was uh, discussing about Emmy about a while ago, because... Um... He has a kind of like a greater appreciation for... Serial's characters, not just barely Snow White, which he was associated as. He associates himself as. It was all the characters in general, and apparently the team itself as well. I mean, if we could take a look at the voice actors and actresses, especially uh, Snow White's uh, Oed Arena, um, Bokilabo, Square Enix, Keiichi Okabe of Monaka, and of course the legendary Yoko Taro, the, uh, the director behind everything there. And then I remember what the fuck. Okay. Then um, I remember Emmy that Emmy told me in one of the, in one of his art of his roleplay accounts. Uh, it was N two. Yokotaro actually followed him there. And he was like, and I was like, what? That was my N2 back in the day. I actually sent it to him because of reasons. Um, late 2019. It was one of the roleplay accounts that I gave to him. Uh, that I gave to him. But all of a sudden, he, he just went. He, he was, he was, I was like, what? I never had any sort of interactions with Yoko Taro back in those days. How are you making it possible? I mean, it was like sort of the dedication that it was from Sirais at that time of launch up to that point that caused everything to be put into place. So, of course, I also, also take it to credit one of his circles, so his accomplices, I mean, um, also had a great impact on why he was very dedicated to Sino Alice in the first place. Regardless of regardless of additions, I mean he initially has many servers, but it all came unified together as a one server um, because of reasons. But he has his server and he has his presence on that particular server where his second accomplice was originated from. It was like uh, like South America here because Venezuela is South America. Positive Ludo forty eight. Hello, hippie people. Oh, hey, hey. How are you doing? I hope you are well. I'm a little bit sick. Um, my apologies if I cough a lot here on stream, but I'm getting a little better. I gotta need to prepare myself because Matsuri's around the corner. I'll disclose everything that I had set up later on in the in the following weeks. But hey, good to see you having around. Pretty much uninterrupted at some point. Very cool. Okay, up next. Um, uh, I'll send you a hug and a pad. There you go. Um, now what was I? <laughs> kind of like forgot what I what I just guessed about. Oh yeah. Um. The thing is, though. The main reason he was devoted, he was initially devoted to Sinalis because his second accomplice, his second circle, took a shot at it. So that's why he got close to her, and apparently, I mean, I mean like, this was. Very unfortunate for him to be able to lose someone. I mean, if I were in his shoes, I would be like crying a lot, but we all know that she's always there, whether or not she's not, whether or not she's physically with us, especially uh, she, uh, whether, uh, especially whether or not she's physically with, him, she's physically alongside him at that point. 
That was his motivation to be able to do something like this. But he was willing to move forward and of course usher forward here just to make it count and of course yeah it was very momentous for it, for someone like him to be able to deal with that so it was really a momentous experience on a low be able to see him persevere through all this I mean, if we can, if I mean, if we can compare to Emmy and my to Emmy's in my life right now, it would be actually be similar because he has these two, he has his two accomplices. I have my two accomplices. I mean, of course, Emmy got his SOTC with a Japanese idol and a Venezuelan artist. Of course, mine had two American VTubers um, with my V Tres Marias. Which I'll be uh, having uh, been having it in full speed on its first anniversary on 26th December. So, uh, or, or probably 27th December. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot my I forgot the anniversary schedule. <laughs> but anyway, main main simple thing being is, is that if you dedicate yourself to one or two persons, you know, one or two people, you know exactly um, that um, regardless of whether or not that physically linked with you, you know that they're in heaven or on earth watching all over you, all over the place. Just to wish you good luck on your journeys ahead. That was like our that was like our mentality for the for many weeks, many months, many years. It has been quite uh, quite a journey overall and um, I'm really ex uh, I'm really really grateful. I mean Taking a look at uh, his uh, particular perspective, I can say we all share the same traits. And of course, other than the fact that we all have the same voice as well, because some of our statistics, some of our attributes are kind of like that, but he tries his best at trying to British, a quote unquote British, a lot on his accent. Which I think is kind of like a part of him, to be honest, because he would kind of like have a character that is different than mine. So he kind of like intentionally did that, just for the name, for this, just for the sake of it. <laughs> but regardless, it's actually kind of commendable that we're all been trying our very best just to have our dedication to someone that we all know, or someone or some two that we are able, that we know, will be able to support us on our way to fame. By the end of the day, oh, but by but by the end of the day, it would still be uh, three friends walking along the same path. Uh, but uh, what would be like three friends walking different paths towards a common goal of reuniting with each other and of course having themselves, hoping themselves for the best of both worlds. So that's exactly what would happen here. And of course, I had that kind of mentality. So that's why um, I was dedicating myself to my accomplices most of the time, to my Marias. So that was really, it's really much that I go for fun here. But anyway, let's go back to uh, to the topic about Sinales because this next topic that we'll be covering about is something that concerns um, Japanese edition. <sighs> Or more, more stuff. So, um, Japanese edition. It's still in service, but we all know it's gonna shut down real soon. How did I learn that? I actually had to look it up <laughs> through different socials because I think something's right and something's not right here. When I Think about when I read about that translations. I actually went over to hashtag my squad's uh, X account just for this. I looked it up. I saw Sam Beats on the post. I was thought like, wait. I think I remember this kind of like a little bit of a feeling because on my last talks, you know, last episode. I actually talked about Baoro by Yojakitan having that kind of trait because both Japanese and global editions 
were all shut down. Despite the fact that Japanese edition has still has its um, app published on Google Play, so I don't know what gives to XNOA here or even Fusion Studio, but we'll save that for another segment. But the thing is, is that not all Japanese edition, not all games had to have Japanese editions on them will have the same treatment as, all, as on the global editions. We saw that with Princess Connect by Psy Games. It was still active. It has not been shut down as of my last um, as of my last awareness on that particular topic. Um, Bandori is still in service both on Japanese and global editions. The latter one becoming CM the latter one incoming with season three, so expanded maps. So that's why my AO5S comes to play because I won't be able to have myself a an ultra wide screen that is not 16 by 9 or 9 by 16 in portrait, but at the same time powerful enough to be able to broadcast myself to the to the rest of the internet. But they're now approaching season three, and they're still in service just yet, and I'm still playing the goddamn thing. Because why not? I I miss I miss playing the whole game. It's like uh, it's like my other dedication. If if we look at it from a comparative perspective, Bandori, uh, my Bandori is his Sino Aris, which is definitely a uh, a big point in there, a big uh, a big turnover point in there. <laughs> so. But the Japanese edition is still going strong, it's way ahead of it. And let's not even forget. Dead or Alive Extreme Venus Vacation, where Venus Island Diaries is uh, based on. They're both still in service. Um, fifth anniversary, incoming, that's kind of like uh, June, I guess. June, July, August. But the sixth anniversary for Japanese edition has already been going and it's still going and also hashtag memory 19 we are day two of hashtag memory week so yeah but even still they are still in service which i can't appreciate that much Sino is on one hand will have a delayed end of service so they're not kind of like simultaneous i don't know, unlike uh what they then like what X Noah and Fusion Studio did to Maroba Yotokitan, which I actually made a story regarding that, or probably made even a broadcast about that. And in fact, that kind of like form factor for me, having the whole thing shut down, is kind of similar to what happened there on the Farewell stream, because that of course on the previous streams that I did. Upon Emmy's request though. But yeah. Japanese edition for uh, Sinai's uh, Japanese edition will shut down on 15 January 2024 at lunchtime, uh, 12 p.m. Uh, Japan time, which is 11 a.m. here in the Philippines. And most notably, um, 4 a.m. Central European time, uh, Central European standard, not Central European summer. It's CET, not CEST, which is CET is Central European Standard, not CEST, which is Central European Summer. But uh, regardless, the Japanese edition will be shutting down in less than two months. So, what's next for Emmy? He can kind of like just download, you know, it's from the get go, but. It's strictly in the Japanese market, so he needs to have his Google Play account sent to Jap sent to Japanese, or just download Ku app and do it from there. But of course, we all know Emmy is going to be a Japanese real soon, so he's preparing everything from the get go. So I've kind of like assisting him in bringing that particular experience to the Japanese market by applying the regional settings to be just Japanese. And that of course includes his Google Play Store location in which it will be Japanese. But how will they be able to switch places? Of course, 
and gives a Japanese card or a PayPal, of course. And at least PayPal is good. And at least PayPal is universal, so I guess it would uh, it would uh, have a little bit of a flexibility there. But hey, um, you can actually do that. But there's another caveat though. November twenty sixth November. Would that mean the final uh, Colosseum Sin for the Japanese edition? So, if that's the case, then there's probably no way for him to be able to deal with that. So, we're just gonna have to deal with this real quick. But, I mean, like, I, I don't know. Maybe the final shit will come in. Will come on what on New Year's Day, um, JSC. So, I guess that would probably make sense, perhaps. Not even sure. As for me, um, I actually had my plans to be able to. I actually had my plans to play Sino Alice because Emmy has, and it's because Emmy had it, and of course I want to get into that. But realizing that Global Edition will be shutting down. Uh, I kind of like threw off, uh, kind of like considered it being on the Japanese edition instead. But once I realized that that last minute before the farewell stream had commenced, that Japanese edition will also be shutting down. I said, you know what? I gotta throw it all off the window. Forget all about us, you know, Alice. Go have, go have Emmy, uh, go let Emmy do his thing, and just. Do it all over again, I guess, you know, having a farewell stream, but for Japanese edition. In which we actually have been planning to deal with. But, uh, you'll see it in, uh, in New Year's Day. So, stay tuned for that. So, in that sense, it would be wise to actually be supporting Emmy on the sidelines as he's figuring out the shenanigans there and, of course, be able to get jump into the game for the first time and then work his way through until the last time which would be a two month lifespan um, less than a less than two months uh, less than two months but uh, you know him with his dedication he can actually do anything he can actually do everything of course apart from his British accent proficiency apparently, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's again, it's very unfortunate that you know Alice Global had to go, and of course, you know, as well, Japanese had to go, so entirety of the library will be closed entirely. So that leads us to the next topic what's next when all when. The Japanese edition will be when the Japanese edition closes its doors to the library and seals them off in the rest of the universe. What's next? Well, we've already brought it up before um, earlier in the stream. And that means that there will be an after story regarding that. But of course, it has to get Yokotaro's approval to be able to deal with this. But He's actually planning on dealing with, you know, having one of the characters instead of all of them. And it has to involve Snow White because you know him as Snow White, right? <laughs> I still have the Freud uh, prepared, but um, I, I didn't finish it in time for the stream, so... Kind of like a little bit unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. I can just deal with that another time and probably prepare it. After uh, I've probably prepared for the Japanese edition's farewell stream, but um, yeah, um, he's planning to have his own story about that. Of course, we already have known the ending about it, which I actually had it in here um, when I was tinkering around. Let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, 
pause for the meantime here because I'll have a little bit of a browser to do. Uh, we're gonna go media source. Um, hold on. Um, see your end post. Oh, um, let me start playback. I read the coding. Okay, so nothing when playback ends. Okay, there you go. I have it on the OBS thing. Yes. Okay, let's... Let's take a look at it, I guess. I mean... <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, uh, I forgot I had to add my VC face on it. Fuck. Uh, let's do uh, spout to capture VC face. This thing. Okay, thanks. Um, four. <laughs> I forgot I had it in here. Fucking Christ. Ah, uh, that's cut. Okay, so essentially this is the... Everything there. Um, as you can see, this is exactly what happened there. Um... So, yeah. This is the uh, thing. Um... It will show up, um, because, you know, the thing has already been set up, but we all need a handing, so... Okay, so essentially what happened here is that um, by the end of everything, assuming that everything has already been purified, right? So after we completed the final chapter of Act of Elimination, which actually the final chapter of that final act led, leads us back to the Book of Bondage. There's actually a thought about, about that. Um, Emmy did not make it, but someone else made it and actually recorded it, so uh, I'll link it to it when it gets to YouTube, but for now, let's just deal with that for the meantime. The whole context behind that is... Everything that we have guarded so far on that particular journey to Sino Alice takes us back to Alice. Just as you can see by the title, it's there's Alice and there's a name Alice at the end, so that means Everything is Alice at the end. So, in a nutshell, it went us back to Arisu. So, Arisu is telling us a story this whole time on how he actually, on how she actually got to the game. And of course, like we already have seen the uh, the ending of that. So, as you can see there, we've already that uh, we've already done the thing there. Yeah, hold on, let me take a look at the Pharaoh stream thing here. Uh. 
week. Okay, so a week. Okay, let's take a look at the thing for a second there. Because I, I really want you guys to see this. Uh, sorry for the transition, because that's exactly what I had here. But just take a look at this here. Um, let's, let's interact for a second. Um, let's maximize the hell out of this. But take a look at this. We have uh, we have the ISD here. We got more videos. So we got Limbus Company. We got uh, which hunters do I hate? But already we got this thing here. It says the Memorial Stream, Memorial Vault. So I think it was like kind of like the Memorial Street, perhaps, or like a Memorial Vault. I'm not entirely sure. But um, there's that, I guess. <laughs> Hold on. Um, again, uh, this is the active elimination I'm gonna be getting away from here because this is like in the end. Um, just that. But let's just check YouTube for a second. I don't know if you can watch it on YouTube. Switch it to more pages, apparently. We can't do anything about that. Okay. But hey, we got two thoughts regarding us, you know, as. But again, like I said before, if you have already seen the the end of final end of that, it all leads us back to Aisu because she's the one telling the whole story from the get go. I mean, this is just a theory that I had come in mind because of that particular uh, kind of like a subject because of the ending. But assuming that, I mean, we already got the title. It pinpoints to Arisu. Now, we got every character here. But every chapter there all leads us back to Arisu because the, again, the act of elimination was just everything from one character to another. And now, I mean, um, the final chapter is all back to Arisu. We've had that, you know, kind of sort. It already reveals to us at the ending of that chapter, everything had has fallen into place. It went back to went back to reality. Was now became was already was already part of Aris's story. So I think, in my perspective here, I don't know if I'm I'm not uh, I'm not uh, I'm not telling this story. Uh, I'm not telling this assumption. On behalf of Emmy, this is my own assumption upon realizing that, of course, I had, my, I had to deal with my own research as well, of course, I have to understand the story, but from that point, it all became clear that it's all part of Arisa's story, so, and again, there's no Sino Arisu without Arisa in general, so, I mean, Mystery solved, I guess? <laughs> so this is where Emmy's plan comes into play. He has his plan to actually hatch the characters. And actually, someone actually disclosed the Google Drive URL on that particular thing. I don't know if I can disclose that right. Maybe I have to ask Emmy about it, but... It all came boiling down to... A number of stories that have previously disclosed on that story you know, on that particular game before it shuts down. I mean, like, the whole game in general. And the fact that one has to deal with um, some sort of uh, shenanigans there, I don't know. Not sure. I'm not... I don't know what, I don't know what words to come from. I don't know what words to make here. But, all I can say is we now know that this is a part of Aris's story. We can now diverge to other characters, which in his case, it has to be Snow White. But the question is, who is Snow White? We just can't not just go and say, this is just Snow White. She just has to have as her, her first name as Snow White. No, we need to find some sort of way to actually believe that 
her name is actually very different. We see it in other major characters there. Um, major characters there. Uh, for example, um, in Dota 2, um, the Crystal Maiden, the CM, is actually named Relay. R-Y-L-A-I. So, in that particular sense, let's put that uh, put that sort of analogy to Sinatism. You can expect that it would have been the same thing with that kind of same concept. Who really is Snow White? And why is she named like that? But anyway, uh, we now know that Aristotle is indeed Aristotle regardless of the name. And of course, of course, it has to be a deal in the game title. So, in his sense, it would be very possible for him to make an actor story about it, but with Snow White's perspective. So, what actually gives here? So, I don't know. Y'all tell me about it. Or probably y'all tell him about it. So, yeah. That is... I think that is really about it for this, uh, for this Agatox, uh, for this episode of Hashtag Agatox. It's been a while. Since I talk that much, um, I mean, judging from his perspective, I can say that he has a lot of dedication on it. So, kind of like wanted to reciprocate that thought of his and tell you guys the whole story about it, so that you guys can also understand what he felt like, what it feels like, it feels like to lose a uh, lose a game, like he lost someone precious to you. You lost a game that's precious to you, that has been with you ever since... I mean, you were like... Take a look at it, it's probably like, a, like you were born. You have this particular thing that is very meaningful to you. And all of a sudden, due to some unforeseen circumstances, that thing went away. You know how painful it is. Painful it is, like, to lose someone over something like this. And that also applies to his case, I mean... We can see his devastation, but he, he needs it, but he's trying to actually compensate that to thank Sinatis for everything. That's when you know that true dedication that he has for the game. I mean, he has his own note and everything, and then people from the server actually widely regarded it as kind of like touching in some cases, or it's kind of like in most cases. It's actually really touching to be able to do something like this. You can actually feel it in his heart. To lose something that has been with him for many years just because of a sales problem. You know, that actually got me thinking. If Yokotaro had that particular idea to sell it off to other companies, he would be dead set for that. But of course, uh, all of that will be in an after story for the meantime. He needs to have an after story, especially for Snow White. So we'll see how it goes for him. Of course, I mean, you know, his writing skills were still kind of like amateurish, but he's kind of like evolving. I mean, he's technically copying my style for his, but you know, he has his own thing to deal with as well. So we'll see how it goes. So anyways... That is probably about it. That is probably about it for this episode. I mean, there's nothing much to tell you aside from the fact that um, we need to deal with everything that has happened over there. So, again, very unfortunate. But, um, he's doing his best and, um, I'm really grateful for having a friend like him. He's been with me ever since kind of like 2019. He made his ex made his form his work his ex account just to complete my just to come uh, just to have that kind of experience. I guess now he is having own connections. 
having Japanese idols on his side. Apparently, some of them were pretty much uh, mutuals with him too. And of course, it has, he has his Japanese crush and also has his Venezuelan crush as well. That was, uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, but again, I can't thank him enough for having that kind of thing because we all know that um, some things never change. And this is one of them. Like, can see all the friendship that we all we both shared. So everyone here is kind of like the same. So yeah. <laughs> so anyways, that is about it for the post mortem of Sin Alice Global Edition. Will be returning for will be returning for another post mortem of Sin Alice, but for a Japanese edition that will come after the Japanese edition ends its service. Like. Totally, all of its services regarding just Tino Alice will shut down. Uh, shut down, shut down on 15th of January 2024 at lunchtime. So we'll be there. I'll be there. Emmy's gonna be there. So everyone's gonna be there as well. So farewell stream for Japanese edition and the entirety in general. We'll soon come on here and of course another postmortem of that as well. So that will be in another hashtag Agatox episode, which I actually now officially declare it as an official podcast. So if you want to check it out, go for my YouTube at youtube.com slash the belongman at, at the belongman at slash uh, podcasts. You can check all of the other places from there, including State of the VTuber community, in which I will be having this disclosed as well on the another state of on another edition of State of the VTuber community this coming November 2023. So, on behalf of SOTC, on behalf of Hashtag Mongus One, on behalf of Emmy, Emmanuel Ortega, on behalf of um, Vitas Marias, the second and third Marias, uh, just, uh, uh, Mama Tiras and Mama Huini, um, Ana Astara and Hina Ojo slash Hina Suki, this has been your very first Maria, Development slash Agat Development, aka Agat 2. Uh, we'll be having another writing stream if we'll be having writing streams every thursday to sunday every thursdays to sundays uh every thursdays to saturdays on v stream as well so um we'll be returning tomorrow with evertale because i miss evertale i miss playing the game and we just have to we just focus we're just focused on seeing us right now that we forgot about evertale so with all that said Thank you so much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Oh, of course, I'll actually... Uh, uh, Project Renyag. I'm also going to be a part of Project Renyag for Vita. I'm also going to be a part of Project Renyag. So if you want to go donate to Project Renyag, the link is in the chat. The URL is in the chat. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.